Welcome back into the channel everyone. You guys asked for some structural welding. This weld test is specifically designed so you can get on both sides of it, whether you're in the shipyard, heavy new construction, or maybe you're building tanks or pressure vessels. Let's get into the double V groove. Now the biggest question to a lot of folks, because typically they see a one inch D11 structural test with a single V groove. That means we put one solid groove on that side and it's usually an open route. But in a lot of cases I've seen where it's really not all that difficult and we don't have to necessarily worry about an open route, especially if we can get on both sides of the plate or pipe. So that's when the double V groove comes in. We're talking about thicker metals that we can access on both sides so that we can put weld on both sides, not only to get complete joint penetration, but to also prevent distortion, being able to weld on both sides. Like I mentioned, you'll do see this in pressure vessels, shipyards, tanks, and heavy structural stuff. This is what that weld symbol will look like. Now, if we got rid of one of those, then we got our single V groove. But the biggest things to worry about when you're looking at a weld symbol for this type of groove are the depth of prep and the depth of penetration. It's not always gonna be complete joint penetration. You might have a one inch piece of plate that says it only needs a quarter inch of prep on both sides. But the point is when you get to welding on it, it doesn't necessarily need an open root. It all depends on the code and procedure. The other two things is your root opening and your groove angle. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna have our double V groove and we've got about an eighth of an inch land on it and we're gonna slam it shut. Now how are you gonna get complete joint penetration when you slam it shut? We're gonna do a little bit of art gouging today. And I brought a little help for today's episode. I got my, my good buddy Johnny from Pearl Snap Pimps. Big dog. And we're gonna weld one out today. Now we are gonna be using the Aesop Warrior 500. This is a freaking powerhouse machine and we're only actually gonna be using some 332 7018 rods. So we're gonna be running around 87, 90 amps for this. Remember, we're gonna weld one side then back gouge the other. So that's why I picked the Warrior over here because this place, Precision Welding Academy, is decked out with these Warriors and Rebels. It has enough power, those 500 amps, to switch over to gouging and so we can get the gouging done. All right, boss, I got all your leads run. Before we get started on anything, we do wanna check all of our equipment. We don't wanna fog anything out, so we are gonna be using the Donaldson Torrent Fume Extractor here. We've got it up and overhead. It's got a nice light for Johnny here so he can see what he's doing. We're gonna give this thing a once around, make sure it's ready to suck all these nasty fumes out. You about ready, Johnny? Let's do it, big dog. All right. What's going on, guys? Johnny Herrera here with Pro Snap Pimps. We're gonna be making this weld right here. It's really important whenever you're taking any kind of weld test, you want to be calm, relaxed. You want to make sure that you're comfortable at the amperage that that machine is giving you. So this is going to be a 2G weld right here. It's going to be pretty easy. You don't want to put your rod angle directly 90 degrees with this. You want to kind of have it set back just a little bit because of gravity. It's going to be wanting to hang down a little bit. And you want to make sure you're tying into this top plate really well. So we're going to put a, a nice bead in here and we're going to uh, get this rolling. All right, so we're gonna run off this uh, tab right here to warm up the 718 rod. See, we're warming it up. Coming into that bevel. Oh yeah. You know, watch that puddle right there. Make sure you see them edges getting burned in. Nice slow roll. You wanna make sure that puddle's staying the same. Keep that rod pushing in there. Nice and smooth. Quick little polish. That nice little restart right there. You want to warm up that puddle about an inch or two before it. Come up to it, do that little J hook on it, and just roll smooth with it. Watch that puddle. Coming up to the edge, don't stop. Just keep it rolling. And 
pull out. So we just put the jimmy on it, cleaned it up. We're gonna put two more beads on here before Austin uh, back gouges it. And that's gonna allow him to do his job back there with the R gouger without actually going through the other side of the plate. Like Johnny said, he knows he's not getting full penetration, but we do want to have enough metal on this other side so that when we come to gouge on this back side, we don't blow a hole straight through it. We're going to see this little line as we start to gouge disappear, and that's how we'll know we hit the metal that Johnny has put down, and then he's good to come on this side and start welding too. All right, everybody, gouging is probably the fastest way to remove metal. You can argue with me on that one all you want, but this gouging is the way to go when it comes to getting into the groove. You can use a grinder and back grind. If you guys want to see some more gouging content, let me know. I actually like doing it, but check it out. You see this line clear as day all the way through the middle of our bevel. All we're going to do is crank on the air. We got the machine set to gouge, it's all the way up. This thing is gonna remove, blow away metal as fast as, as I can touch it. And all I'm gonna be looking for is making that little line disappear. Gotta love the art gouger, guys. It's gonna get there, it's gonna be quick and dirty, but it's fast. It's still really clean, just give it a quick jimmy. Best advice I can give for an art gouge is turn that gas pressure up turn the amperage up and just get to ripping. And be careful, you do want to find that line. You can see the line now, still got a little bit of line to remove to get that complete joint penetration for Johnny. You can tell I moved a little slower. I was a little bit more meticulous at that point, looking for that line, slowly chipping away at it until I don't see it anymore. Now that we're pretty much done with the gouging, we are gonna break out a little bit of some grinding to clean everything up so Johnny has some nice clean metal to weld on. Uh, that's a clean weld right there. You can eat your lunch off of it. All right, put a beat in it, welder. Let's make some money. All right, once again, because it's so thin right here, we're gonna have to move a little bit quicker. One in there. I'm doing a tiny little up and down wiggle. Just because I don't want to blow through. It's still running at 90. There you go, Poppy. Big dog. Man, if you're a helper, you gotta you gotta be moving like that. Yeah, All right, everybody. Johnny, you got it pretty much evened out on both sides now, right? Yeah. Now what, what's there to it now? Just fill it up, cap it, make some money and go home. Yeah, that's all it takes. That's all we're gonna do. So let's pitter patter, get out of it, pull some other leads. I got this uh, ESOB 180SI over here uh, and we're gonna just keep ripping on it. Okay. Mask closed.
open that. Nobody welds faster than Iron Man. Yeah, that'll do it there, bud. Freaking smashed out both sides. And that's really all it is to it, guys. It's really not that complicated of a weld. It's just one extra step. You're essentially making your own backing strap, right? You gotta put a backer on one side, get down to the good stuff, and fill it up just like we did today. Y'all be sure to go check out all the links we got down below in our description. Esob, Donaldson, a lot of our partners help us make this content. And thanks to you, Johnny, for coming out and welding one with me, man. Give him some love over there at pearlsnotpimp.com. See you on the next weld.